Wall Street Journal, just, this just crossed. Uh, here it is. This is the headline sentence. President Trump personally directed an effort in February to stop Stormy Daniels from publicly describing an alleged sexual encounter with Mr. Trump, people familiar with the events say. Here's the point. This sets the timeline back further than where the president said he didn't know anything about this, he didn't know anything about payments. This was Michael Cohen just doing something really nice for uh, his friend, the president. And so this shows direct involvement. Oh, and the president also directed his son, Eric Trump, according to this report, to help with this in the effort to silence Stormy Daniels. And it shows for the first time the direct involvement of the president and his son, Jeffrey. Well, it, it you know it, it, it stands to reason that the president was highly exercised about this. We didn't know uh, th th this until the Wall Street Journal reported it, but it is certainly um, in keeping with the president's continued involvement with his companies, notwithstanding his uh, claim that he wouldn't be, and also just th the fact that he is deeply engaged in the uh, the legal fights against him. And Josh, I don't have the exact timeline because we're just seeing this article here for the first time. Mm -hmm. But if he's directing the response to Stormy Daniels, including at one point wanting to pay uh, for the legal fees, I'll take mm -hmm. care of everything, he says in, in February of 2018. That is so much earlier than he had previously admitted knowledge of this out loud to the American people. Mm -hmm. Sarah Sanders out loud to the American people denying the president had to do anything, uh, had anything to do with it. So, so this really does show, once again, if this article is true, that he just wasn't being straight, that he was out and out lying about his involvement over this whole issue. Now, what this article shows is that at every step, the president and his aides have intentionally misled reporters as to what happened. The original Wall Street Journal article reporting the Stormy Daniels allegation appeared on January 12th. At that time, Trump claimed to have absolutely no knowledge. The White House said he had no knowledge. Uh, of payments, of anything having to do with the National Enquirer. About a month later, it turns out there were payments. Uh, the president's line then was he didn't know about them in advance and only found out later. Now we find out not only did he know about it yeah. at the time, but he was directing this response. And so it, it just shows that the entire pushback from literally from day one has been a lie. Lies. I mean, not untruths, not he didn't have the information, but if this article is right, he was just lying. It certainly appears that way. I mean, it's possible his, you know, some of his staff didn't know the full truth or he didn't confide in them or wasn't honest with them. Uh, but certainly everything he'd said about how he didn't know in advance, about how this was something that Michael Cohen was only doing on his own, none of that was true, according to this article. There's also uh, Ren, uh, a no comment from several key players. Jay Sekulow, the president's lawyer, the Trump Organization, and Lanny Davis, Michael Cohen's lawyer. So... I don't know. Your thoughts? I mean, I, I think that <laughs> Americans, again, have sort of decided in their mind whether or not the president knew about Stormy Daniels. I guess I would just say that we have a split screen here in which the White House is asking uh, the U.S. Senate to confirm someone to a lifetime appointment at the same time that that White House is not being truthful with the American people. And I just think that's something to think about, because when someone's on the Supreme Court, they're not accountable to the voters, but the senators will be. Um, and this is the first time, Jeffrey, that we've seen Eric Trump, his name, involved uh, in any process. Donald Trump Jr., of course, involved in the Russia investigation. This is unpleasant to be tasked with your with getting rid of your father's uh, alleged, alleged paramour. Yes. Yeah. No. I mean, it, it's it, it's it's a, a un, unpleasant story, but but it just shows how concerned the president was from day one about this, and it turns out for good reason, because this story has blown up in his face. Um, the, 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 it is a, you know, it, it's a major embarrassment. You know, whether it has changed anyone's mind about who Donald Trump is, I don't know. I mean, you know, even looking at these polls about Kavanaugh, basically any question you ask comes out about the same yeah. way. 55 to 60 percent of the public disagrees with Trump, doesn't like Trump. 35 to 40 percent is supportive of Trump. It doesn't matter whether it's tax cuts or Stormy Daniels or the You're children right. at the border. People are dug in. People are, point. I mean, just the questions uh, almost always come out the same way. Right. And again, we have the president on tape talking about payments in, in relation to the Karen McDougal matter and the National Enquirer here. So this just goes to that same point. This is a terrific report uh, from the Wall Street Journal, I think, that raises a whole bunch of new questions about just how honest or dishonest the president has been with the American people on this matter.